Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to this wonderful event. It's been a very good activity to meet you all in a warm and sunny uh, weather in Istanbul. Well, I'm from Gazi University English Language Teaching Program, uh, and I've been working there as a research assistant doctor, and I teach freshman year courses and practicum course. Uh, in my university. Well, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, one of the uh, ILTARC uh, project studies that we carried out with uh, Sumra Akchan. Uh, the early years of teaching, challenges, solutions, and advantages. Well, I'm going to introduce you with the perspectives, challenges, uh, and the solutions of novice language teachers uh, that they experienced in their initial years of teaching. Uh, before I start, I would like to learn, is there anybody who is uh, here, of course, who is in their initial years of teaching? Is there any novice teacher among us? No? Okay. Uh, well, then you probably you will remember your initial years when I introduced them one to one. Okay, before I start, I would like to say that, well, uh, our study was a part of International Language Teacher Education Research Group and was funded by Turkish National Agency and Erasmus Plus Project. Uh, with this study, we aim to uh, understand the divergent and shared challenges uh, experienced by Turkish and Polish novice language teachers, and we aim to understand how they develop their professional understanding in the early years of teaching. Our participants were 34 novice language teachers in Turkey and in Poland, and uh, they were working with K-12 learners uh, in socio-culturally socio diverse regions of Turkey and Poland. Uh, well, the Polish novice language teachers were from the Pomeranian region and Turkish novice language teachers were working in the central Anatolia, eastern, southeastern and Marmara regions in Turkey. Um, how did we collect the data? Well, uh, based on the um, explanations by Peter de Costa, uh, we used critical incidents. Well, we, we used critical incident analysis guideline questions uh, developed by TRIP in uh, 1993, and we used, upon them, we used semi-structured interviews with those novice language teachers to better understand each case they experienced. Um, briefly, I can say that the critical incident analysis framework uh, consists of five different uh, parts. The first part was about the account of the incident. So, we assigned those questions to both Turkish and Polish novice language teachers, uh, and they explained, first of all, wh uh, what happened in their workplace. Uh, well, the critical incident, actually, what, we, what we do we understand by the term critical incident? Any idea before I explain? Okay. Uh, a critical incident uh, can happen uh, at any time. We may not be aware of it, but upon the experience, uh, something, you know, aha moment, that aha moment, something comes to our mind, right? And we feel we learn a lot upon the incident, but we may not be aware of the importance of that incident at the time of the experience. And uh, when especially the novice language teachers think about what caused them to think, to act, to uh, decide, make a decision uh, accordingly, then uh, they think about that event in depth and they say that, aha, uh, because of this event I felt like that, because of this event, at the end of this event I learned something that is very important. And then we aim to 
uh, increase their awareness. The second part is related to the initial responses to the incident. And uh, we have also issues and dilemmas part that were, hi that were highlighted uh, by this incident. Uh, here, for example, we focused on the values and ethical issues that novice language teachers learned uh, during the event. Uh, the fourth part was about learning. What did you learn after you met this event? Okay, And uh, how? For example, did it contribute to your practical or theoretical knowledge that you gained at pre-service level? And the last part was about the outcomes. Uh, what are your thoughts, feelings now about this incident? Well, the incident happened in the past, but they were evaluating the incident uh, after some time. So when they go back, think about the event in detail, then, for example, they may say, huh, I might not have behaved like that. It would be better for me to act like that, okay? They are commenting on the event and their reactions. Uh, before I go on with uh, more details about the research context, uh, I want to say that there are previous studies conducted on this topic. Well, for example, Steve Mann and Tang, in their uh, articles uh, published in TESOIL Quarterly, uh, they used interviews, document analysis, diaries, school visits, and lesson observation notes with uh, Korean novice English language teachers, and uh, they found that, well, those teachers, those novice teachers, had problems, had challenges related to cooperation with their supervisors, I mean, at pre-service level, and they had problems in motivating Korean students. And other studies also were carried out uh, by using different data collection tools. For example, uh, just like in our study, they also used critical incident framework, interviews, questionnaires, and uh, of course, a review. Uh, there was a review study. And when we look at the overall uh, themes, the challenges found in these studies, we can see that uh, novice language teachers mostly had problems about uh, collaboration with their colleagues, parents. Uh, what, we, what do we mean by parents here? The parents uh, of, the, uh, of their students in, in their workplace. And building the bridge between the pre-service programs, I mean the theoretical knowledge, and realities in schools. Teaching large classes is a huge problem for novice language teachers in nearly all around the world. Um, again, motivating students, working hours, some of them complain about you know, too much load and teaching multicultural and multi-level classes. Now we will see the same problem in our country uh, soon, and teaching diverse student populations. So let's come back to our study. Uh, as you all know, uh, our pre-service, especially fourth year pre-service uh, students, uh, enter the two-stage examination process after they graduate from their departments. Well, in the first stage, they are supposed to be successful in the written exam, what we call Kamu Personali Seçme Sınavı, right? And in the second part, the, the uh, examination process is not over yet. After that, they are supposed to take an oral examination. And if they are successful, they have the right to be appointed to uh, a town, a village, wherever uh, their score is uh, valid. And, uh, well, we are an EFL country. Yasemin Hocam, can I say that? <laughs> we are an EFL country in Turkey. Okay. But uh, those novice language teachers uh, have started to increase their awareness about English as an international language act practice. And our Turkish state schools consist of uh, not only Turkish students anymore, but also Kurdish, Arabic, Persian, and African students also, due to the you know, migration and refugee 
problems, especially happening in the uh, last years. And in Poland, well, uh, they follow uh, a bit different uh, process, I can say that. Uh, after their graduation, based on their teacher qualifications and uh, the program they, gradu they graduated from, uh, are the two key points for them to be appointed rather than a written and an oral examination. And each institution in Poland decides on their own, whether to hire or not. And again, English uh, has started to be considered as an international language there. And uh, different from Turkey, Polish state schools, I can say that, consist of Ukrainians, some Polish state schools, consist of Ukrainians and some immigrants, but uh, they are not as heterogeneous as we are. So, let's move on with the data. What did we find at the end of this study? The shared and divergent challenges uh, that novice language teachers experienced in Poland and Turkey. Um, we compiled a workbook for prospective language teachers, challenges from diverse classroom contexts, uh, I'm sure you will be able to see the details of this workbook in the leaflets in each file that was given to you at the entrance. Uh, the workbook was compiled by uh, Sumra Akchan again and me. Uh, we included different cases, different stories of novice language teachers, and we prepared at least five or six different uh, thought-provoking questions. This workbook is suitable to be used at practicum uh, seminar lessons uh, at pre-service level. So, let's have a look at the overall similar challenges. Well, Turkish and Polish novice language teachers found uh, or had difficulty in choosing age-appropriate and language-appropriate uh, teaching materials, and they also had difficulty in managing classrooms. So, classroom management is a universal topic, I can say. Uh, because of the student misbehavior and inexperienced teacher's attitude in the classroom. Okay, here is a sample case. Uh, I think I have some time. Uh, I can read the case and have a look at, for example, one question. In a secondary school in the Marmara region of Turkey, I started introducing myself in L2 and continued in that way. Speaking in the target language from the beginning caused frustration among students because they could not understand me, even though I simplified my statements. I was so surprised to see that the secondary school students were not proficient in L2. I hang up classroom rules with visuals on the notice board, brought visuals related to target vocabulary items for each unit, and went on using L2 in the classroom. This enabled students to observe my consistency in the use of L2 and to help them get used to hearing L2. I think if the uh, previous teachers had persisted in the use of L2, the students would have uh, felt more comfortable and their proficiency level would have been higher. I realized that establishing classroom rules at the beginning of the term and following them consistently affected students' behavior positively. I negotiated the issue with the colleagues who were older and more experienced than me. This helped me overcome the feeling of shock and led me to take decisions about my teaching techniques. This incident contributed to my patience and ambition in teaching. This is a sample case. As also, uh, Peter de Costa warned us, uh, we gave value to participant confidentiality in this study. So, we did what? We gave them pseudonyms and we asked them to sign the consent forms. Uh, even the school names were not revealed in this study. Only the region and the case that uh, we focused on. So, for example, what could be the reasons for the challenge? 
what would your first reaction be? These are the questions for pre-service practicum year students. Uh, we aim to increase their awareness about the reality, what, uh, in reality, in real world. What kind of activities, what kind of experiences will they meet in their new workplace in order to help them uh, better cope with those shocking situations, unexpected maybe problems. Of course, we cannot present or introduce them uh, to uh, every you know, unexpected situations, but we at least try to do our best. And now it's time for uh, the uh, different challenges. Well, in Turkish context, uh, because of students uh, the primary, secondary, or high school students, diverse ethnic background, teachers in our study had difficulty. For example, the, the mother tongue interference, the illiterate students in Turkish, the official language, because the teacher is Turkish himself, the students over there are not Turkish, other than Turkish, okay? Uh, so, the teacher usually has problems, first of all, communication problems, uh, establishing while establishing classroom rules, and etc. So that turned out to be a very huge problem for us. And the unwillingness students, uh, because of their parents' negative attitudes, because some of the parents, unfortunately, do not want their students to learn uh, either Turkish or English. Uh, but in Polish context, uh, the divergent themes uh, were quite different from us. The, first of all, students were ethnically homogeneous there, so their problems usually uh, focused on motivating students, how to motivate students, how to teach mixed-level classes, and how to manage classes properly. And this is another case well, I love this case because uh, our graduates all the time complain us about similar topics. Uh, would you like me to read it? Do I, do I have enough time? Okay. I was teaching eight graders in a remote village in the eastern Turkey. In eastern Turkey. In the third unit, the theme was cooking. Cooking. Throughout the unit, there were target vocabulary items, dialogues, visuals, and listening recordings of intercultural food types, such as pizza. And in the pizza making steps, one of the students asked me whether the pizza tasted delicious or not. I was shocked and sad then, because I realized that none of the students in the class of 27 had ever tasted pizza before. However, the course book uh, prepared by uh, Board of Education and approved by Ministry of National Education has been prepared from an international perspective and included the unit food and cooking steps. Since students have never experienced such cooking styles and food types, they wondered about the taste, so could not understand the unit and cooking steps enough. I think that the content and syllabus should be prepared based on the cultural and social background of target students. Well, this was a commitment by uh, Turkish novice language teachers. So, here is the question. Do you think uh, the coursebook content, the syllabus, should be prepared regionally? And what would you do if you were the teacher in this case? You are in the middle of teaching. You haven't thought about you know, such a situation. You are unprepared. What would you do? Yes, please. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. we should develop their self-esteem as a teacher to decide what they are going to do in the classroom in such cases. Mm -hmm. So you would change, for example, the pizza yeah. theme uh, with local other food. local food. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And any other ideas? Yes, please. Mm-hmm. Go on. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, after the class, maybe you would prepare. Ha <laughs> ha. Because of this fact, or was it just for fun? Both. Let's say. Okay. Thank you. This is another uh, perspective. And any other? Okay. We may go on. So the second research question was about how they develop their professional understanding. I mean, we aim to focus here the benefits, the advantages that the participant novice language teachers gained at the end of the study. Uh, first, I can say that uh, they met unexpected problems because such realities were not introduced to them at their pre-service level education. Uh, for example, they met uh, students who were prejudiced against cultural differences, who were illiterate in the official language, and whose parents' attitudes were quite negative towards learning English, learning Turkish, okay? And the participants' feelings, of course, uh, were feeling that shock, frustration, uh, and prejudices against uh, some students and they, they questioned uh, for a while, why am I doing this job? And then, within time, they started to uh, develop their own coping strategies to solve them with reference to age-specific characteristics. For example, if they were teaching a young learner group, then they started to think about what things could be done, what things could work more with the young learner group. And, of course, this uh, study increased their understanding of the social, cultural, and economic issues of the teaching environment that they, are, uh, they were working at the time of the study. And, uh, of course, narrating the incident incidents in this study helped them uh, raise their awareness on the source of the problems that may seem ordinary for anyone and on the resolutions they developed within time. The awareness teachers developed here was considering precautions, I mean, uh, for future student behaviors. For example, they met a specific problem, they developed a solution, and they recorded, recorded them and kept them, kept those solutions because uh, they saw that, yes, those solutions were really working well in their classes. Then they kept them and uh, considered them uh, as a strategy for their future classes, future learners. So, uh, this study also helped them improve their teaching practice. How? Well, from their perspective, from the participants' perspective, being a successful teacher, um, um, well, means, for example, considering the needs and opinions of students first, and then being getting prepared for the lesson according to those needs. For example, patience and professional attitude towards the classroom problems were considered uh, as a prerequisite for being a successful teacher. And they also learned that each age group needed special attention and understanding. So, for example, assessing young learners should be made on their individual skills. I mean, each young learner's individual skills, for example. Uh, to conclude, we can say that uh, when, for example, the participant language teachers were able to transform a negative situation, a problematic situation, into a positive outcome, I mean, when they tried something and when they saw that, yes, it worked, then they defined this process, this strategy, as the steps on the way to becoming a teacher, because still they were learning how to become a teacher the learning teaching process you know was all the time going on uh, but if they were unable to cope with the challenge 
This was often regarded as the conflict of roles and these connections between their uh, too much focus at pre-service level and their real experiences at present in the real world. So they refer to the gap between the pre-service programs and the in-service realities. These inabilities increase their, however, awareness and determination on the way to becoming a teacher within time for most participants. And to be able to cope with these challenges, they pro preferred problem-focused coping strategies. We have also uh, suggestions for teacher educators. What are they? As I said, novice teachers focused on always the gap between the theoretical knowledge at pre-service level and the practical you know, knowledge, the reality in their own workplace. So we should try to, as teacher educators, uh, introduce them to more realities. And they evaluated the pre-service programs through the challenges which they encountered but could not cope alone. And um, they needed for skills to teach English in mixed level and multicultural diverse classes. So we may revise our program, at least the content in each course maybe, and we can give implications for teaching in a uh, culturally uh, diverse context. I'm sure this will help a lot, especially for Turkish students. Uh, you know, the world uh, is facing refugee and migration problems, uh, each country, I can say that. So novice teachers also suggested the consistent supervision and support from their uh, practicum supervisors, even if they, were a they are a graduate. Um, how can we help them? Well, bringing videos of various classrooms uh, from different regional parts in, in Turkey and in Poland, maybe, uh, will help them better understand what is going on uh, in the country. And online forums, social media, Facebook pages we have, uh, Twitter accounts we have, uh, those pre-service students should be led to those social platforms where they could negotiate with novice teachers, with more experienced teachers, and see what is happening in state schools. And also using critical incident analysis framework for supervisors, uh, I believe, will be a really helpful tool uh, to discover what kind of critical incidents fourth-year pre-service teachers observed in their practicum schools because they need to learn from each experience. Of course, school and university partnership should go on. Um, yeah, I talked about a workbook. And creating reflective learning contexts, I'm sure, we will help novice teachers adapt to their school settings. So I just briefly introduced you the study itself. But if you want to learn more about the cases and how novice language teachers reacted, what uh, kind of things they learned at the end of the process, you can use this link to access uh, to the article. And of course, if you share your ideas, comments with us after you read them, we will be more than happy. Thank you very much for your participation. If you have any questions, you may contact us anytime. Thank you.